Ankle Curry is like this. It's a small village, one shop, one chapel, plenty of sheep, good football team. <laughs> I'm Ashton O'Reilly from Off The Ball and with thanks to AIB, proud club sponsors of the Football Hurling and Camogie All-Ireland Club Championship, Today we're in Kilku of County Down and I'm going to chat with Caelan Doherty, recent All-Ireland club champion. Caelan, tell me about Kilku. What is it like as a place? Yeah, actually it's about 1,200 people live in it. Uh, a lot of people would say when you drive through it and blink, you're, you're out. It's much more bigger than that to the people that live in Kilku. Um, we have a shop, we have a school, and that's probably really it in the parish that we have. Um, you know everyone. You're just growing up with people or you know people through other friends, and that's all we had um, growing up. I remember going to primary school and mum would have said to me, you need to take your school book books and all, but it was literally as long as I had my ball, I was happy enough. And yeah, whenever you're in primary school, it's probably it's not great for me to say it, but uh, you're near before lunchtime making sure that you had your team and all selected. So when you were going out at lunch, you were making the most of the time you had to play football. And sometimes it would end and maybe a few people not talking to each other for the next hour after in the classroom. But that, that was just it. We, we all just wanted to win. And if you didn't win, you weren't happy. You were going home very, very annoyed. And that was just it. That was just drilled into us. For people that don't know Kilku, it wasn't always successful. No, so uh, a couple of years ahead of me uh, was the guys, um, Darrell and Arn, or Darrell and Arn Morgan, Ryan Johnson, Darrell Hanlon, um, Jerome, Ed Bobo. They, they won a lot. They won the Fela, and they would have won numerous county titles. They would have maybe won from under 12s growing up to minor and then senior. So all they knew was success. We didn't. We had a wee bit of success. Um, as you know, Connor was our, our uh, primary school he came in and helped us in primary school. Um, we were seven side, nine side. We were very, very good. We were a great seven, nine side team. But then when we went uh, on our 15 side and underage, we just we just didn't have the numbers mm -hmm. actually. And we literally had 17, 18 players. And sometimes if somebody was injured or somebody was sick or there was a holiday, you maybe had about three or four goalies playing out the field. You were coming into school and you were meeting guys from Castle Allen and Brainsford. And they maybe had an A division game against the likes of Warren Point and Burn. And they could have won that game where we were coming from a C League, um, Division 3. And we were playing amalgamated teams that maybe beat us by 10 or 12 points. And it was quite embarrassing because you're maybe sitting in class with them guys and they were like, how'd you do? And we were like, ah, oh, we got hammered. I think that was made us probably the people that we are now as mm -hmm. players because we didn't have a success. So when we win, we're really appreciative of it. And it was actually four of us, me, Eugene, Dylan and Michal from that age group that actually come through to play senior. And that was probably the biggest amount that's come through to play senior. So it's not all, always about the success on the age. As much as we would have loved to win, we just we just didn't have the numbers. And thankfully at senior level, we we do now. And we're enjoying the success now and we're really appreciative of it. And we actually have a picture here. I might just grab it. So this actually is the picture of your team with Connor Laverty as your manager. Connor has, yeah. He's, maybe he has a bit of a beard now, but <laughs> all in that there, he looks quite similar. Uh, you have. Dylan, who's playing midfield at the minute. Um, Keelan, this before Keelan got sick and before he had a liver transplant. So, yeah, Keelan was a very good player and obviously just the sickness had probably curtailed him to retire from football. So, I was quite sad for him. Um, you had Michal, who had a brilliant year this season. Um, Michal's really yeah. come through. And then, obviously, myself, Eugene, beside um, Connor. Brandon's on the squad as well. And then the other guys will play Premier Reserve Reserve. So, yeah, most of them guys still play football. Um, but literally, that was our, that was the boys in the primary school class. Some of them, Michal and Garth, are their P6, and then the rest of us were P7. So, as I said, when we went seven and nine aside, we were a very good team. Um, <laughs> and obviously, with Connor, we were, we were doing three man weaves, and we were doing different things that probably senior teams were doing at that age. But Connor had that distilled in us that that's what we were doing, and anything that he asked, we we would have done it underage. We literally idolised him and looked up to him, and it was just unbelievable that we had him as a manager because. He was just special for us growing up and he was just literally like a father figure to all of us. So he went from being your primary school manager to playing alongside him and winning All-Ireland with him. Yeah, it's, it's, it's remarkable. It's remarkable and when you say it like that, you sort of <laughs> sit back and uh, I was actually listening to the 
the interview the other night um, where he's standing in Crow Park and you're literally like, he's standing in Crow Park talking and when he brings Mickey up, it's, it, it sort of sends shivers down your spine and you're sort of, you're near tearing up because it was unbelievable. Um, and you look back at that, like that's stuff that you're going to have for life. And something that's quite unbelievable is the story of Kulku. It's such a small place, but also there's nine of you on the team that are all related. So there's five Brannigan brothers, three Johnson brothers, and then yourself. And you all basically start as well on the team. So without you or without that family, <laughs> there wouldn't be much of a team. That's quite unreal to have on one team. Oh, it is now, yeah. But I will say you don't give your cousin or your relation any help or not like you wouldn't give them any support like obviously in the pitch you're, you're mm -hmm. all there to help each other out but at training like I'm not giving one of them an inch and they're not giving no. me an inch there's no there's bragging rights and that's been <laughs> very young whenever you used to go over to the Brannigan's house on a Sunday and you maybe would have left with a, a row breaking out and <laughs> just a fallout and I'm not going back there or he didn't give it to me or he should have, and that was just it. And that was just us. And he, that's maybe how the matches ended every night. But uh, when you know you're marking the Brannigans every night at training, you're going to get no leeway. And then whenever you're going against them, you're not giving them any leeway. You're marking the best every mm. night at training. And that's what you want. That's only to make you a better player. And so growing up, you didn't see Cuckoo always being so successful. When was the first county title? A uh, first league was in 03. I was really, really young. I maybe would have been about five or six, but you remember going to Newcastle and then beating Castle Allen that day. Um, Kukui actually just scraped through in 03 to get that league, finally came fourth, and then it was the top four played each other. So mm -hmm. Kukui won the league in 03, and then there wasn't success to 09. Um, but you were at the championship in 07, 08. I remember leaving in Downpatrick whenever Castle Allen had beat Kukui, and there was people from Castle Allen saying, you'll never get to the where you just want to be and you just you are too small and you just carry too many small players and you just don't have it you know and um, that, that sort of hit home with a lot of people and then in 09 you were watching on as it coming on the field and when Kukui beat Lock and Island that day uh, it was absolutely amazing and it was just like the All Iron final but there were people on the field just crying and you were just like this is class these are these are my idols mm -hmm. like I just want to be with these guys come to training and just watch them so we would all came to training like Connor and Eden's lads come today and all the rest and you just watch them train you were literally with your mouth open and I would have just watch how the force felt how their movement was what way they were doing were they cutting each other's runs were they blocking space were they support running and you just used to watch them and say right the next night I go to train I'm going to do this because mm -hmm. if they're doing this and this is working well, I need to start doing this. So that's the way it was distilled in you. And then you're adding up the years. So when will I be a senior player? So <laughs> yeah, when's I, my chance? Yes, when will my chance be? Can I play with these guys? So you just were, that was pushing you on whenever the championships were coming in. But you knew that it needed everyone as a push. Mm -hmm. And so you're watching on as they start to have this success. You must be looking on thinking this is going to be difficult here to, to break into this team. Every year the team gets stronger and stronger. Mm -hmm. You had that, um, the Fela team coming through and they were all pushing into the squad and then you were coming in and you were sort of looking how could I get into this team whenever I came in in 14 I was very very small I thought it was good enough ability wise I thought I had enough ability mm -hmm. as everyone else but the thing was coming back that was I was too small so I never really I never really got to play at a county underage or never really got to excel because it just was too small and too weak I was getting pushed off the ball quite easy um and it was just, it was quite hard, but you sort of bottled that all in. You were coming and you were thinking, I'm as good as that person. Yeah. But that person's bigger than me, so he's going to play ahead of me. So that was quite tough and it really it took its toll. And it was just in the winter of 15, I was like, well, I need to do something that nobody else is doing. A lot of people give up there. So you obviously decided, no, I'm going to do something about it. That's it. And you just knew that every day when you were waking up each morning, you were saying, right, I need to get enough food into me. I need to get to the gym. And you just knew that maybe ability wise, you, you had enough or you mm. could you had enough speed or you had enough creativity but you just knew that if I don't get any bigger I'm not going to play and it was quite tough um you were you were going to squads and you were maybe it was actually it was opening the newspaper and you were invited to a panel and then the panel would be made on the newspaper the following week it after the trial in the newspaper. and you just went to it was each club on the player who's going to be representing and it was just like a coup and it was just wasn't me so that, that was quite hard growing up wow that is really tough that they put that in a newspaper so that's how you find out it's usually how we find out it was it would have been in the Irish news and it would just being like the representatives of every development squad and then 
when you went to county minors and then you were maybe you thought you'd done well in the, the trials and then uh, yeah you just weren't invited back and then you're going into school or maybe going to university and other people were like yeah I got invited back for a second trial and you just didn't get the second trial and so it was tough like it, it probably there was a lot of uh, lonely times and a lot yeah. of thoughtful times but you just knew that you had to stick by it you weren't going to give up thankfully I put on a bit of uh, muscle and size and started um, getting stronger in the tackle and whenever I was tackling people they, they sort of knew that I was tackling them they weren't able to push me off as mm -hmm. much so that sort of helped me a lot and then in 16 um, I got a good opportunity to play for Kilku and um, there's a few injuries that happened and then I get in and so this um, is your first chance first chance um, I get in had a good championship campaign, campaign and I sort of I stayed in there from then and thankfully uh, we won the county title and then we ended up losing in the Ulster final to Slock Neil um, where Mickey was the manager yeah so uh, yeah it was tough I actually had a goal chance to score and I missed it so that sort of sticks with you and makes you who you are today but um, yeah I was just thankful that people were there to help me and um, it just sort of takes that sort of hurt mm -hmm. to make it feel even more special whenever you win and whenever you do something successful so yeah um, that was probably the reason I just needed to put on a wee bit of weight and I had to do that but thankfully I did put it on. So we're looking out on the pitch obviously you've played so many of the games here and when you started out this year was it the plan to go the whole way to the All Ireland, like what way do you look at it? You've won so many down championships now in a row. Do you look at it like, okay, this is the year we're gonna go the whole way? You maybe have that talk, um, that like you want to be the best team in Ireland, like with where a lot of teams will have at the start of the year, they want to be the best team in Ireland because they'll dream and they have aspirations and they'll have looked in some Paddy's day, like myself, and seen um, how good would it be to win an All Ireland club with with your own club, like mm -hmm. so. Uh, you do, but after whenever that sort of talked about you know that first and foremost it's the league games and then the championship games and not taking your eye off the ball and I think Mickey's great about that he makes sure that you only take one step at a time and that's what's needed because if you look further abroad that's whenever you get caught in games so you always want to get to the Ulster final and we'd, we'd been there in times when we could beat but when mm. we get over the Ulster we, we got a wee bit um, excited about the prospect of winning an Northern Ireland club and then it just got a wee bit more believable and achievable mm. for people and then you just looked on and you just were like, one day I would love to do that. Like, and that's just it. But as you said, like you never take your eye off the down championship and you know that there's a lot of good teams in down that could pip you in any given day and a kick of a ball. So yeah, you do, but it's always a small talk and you never really want to say it to other people and you never really want to talk about it. But mm -hmm. deep down, when you believe, when you, you're doing all the hard work, you're maybe thinking this could be in the goal of winning the North Ireland Club one day. And so talk to me about Ulster then. So obviously you went on to play Glen. That was probably one of the toughest games. I think the talk was that Glen were tipped to, to go the whole way this year. Yeah, Glen had a very strong Derry Championship. They, they breezed across a lot of good teams. Um, then they came to Ulster and then Scottstown uh, it was mm. a very tough game, but they got through it in Celtic Park. We knew that Glen were going to be yeah. a very tough task, and thankfully we get the goal in extra time, you know, and it was one of our extra times. And Jerome again, got, extra time again. <laughs> Jerome got the goal, and thankfully, uh, yeah, we, we get over the line in that one. Jerome knows very, how to score a goal, doesn't he? Yeah, he knows how to score a goal. <laughs> he, he won't, yeah, no, he is. He's, <laughs> He's a, he's a goal scorer, he's just got that um, predator about him when he's, he's near the net. And so then once you won Ulster, you went on then to the All-Ireland semi-final and that went to extra time as well. <laughs> extra time as well against Finbars, a very big side, um, very physical, but yeah. they could run as well and they had a, a very, very good free taker that wasn't going to miss them. We knew that coming into the game and yeah, Finbars were a cracking side, um, took us to the wire, um, really, really physical and on another day, they maybe could have won the game, which that that's the way it is in club championship because there's not many um, differences between teams. There's no. maybe, as I said, a kick of the ball. So there was a lot of commotion in the last. It could have been the last kick of the game for Paul Devlin, and Aiden got sent off. It was basically that it was a what way did they do it then? A hot ball was it? Yeah, it yeah, went yeah, to a throw yeah. up, but we knew that um, if it went to extra time, it's a new game, so you got yeah. the 15 players back on the pitch again. What was it like going into the dressing room, knowing that Aidan had just got sent off, he could have won the game, 
Paul Devlin, I'm sure, was quite annoying that he couldn't take his free. He was ready to go. And then you just go in there to that changing room. What was said? Like, as we've been in extra time a lot, and we know that, like, what Aidan had done, obviously, um, he, he, like, he'll know himself that. It was probably, out of character. Yeah, but th th that's, do you know what I mean? And Aidan was the first person to put the hand in the back at the extra time saying, I believe in you. And he's always like that. So, yeah. no, um, that doesn't be talked about because you know that you could waste 10 minutes of energy talking about something that had already happened, but you weren't going to progress anymore. No. What was in front of you was more important. So we knew that keeping calm and getting control of the ball and getting the scores at the right time was going to be what was needed to get across the line. And thankfully, we got the scores and yeah, that led us to getting into an All-Ireland final. So And then the All-Ireland final. So in the build-up to that, going out to Crow Park, you had missed the, the last All-Ireland with Curra Finn due to an injury. What was it like going out to Crow Park? Yeah, it was unbelievable. Um, whenever you're out in the back garden, you always think that you're playing in Crow Park. And yeah. So yeah, it was really good to actually get playing in Crow Park. Um, and you were always thinking, don't take the, the ground in. But it was a very tough stadium, even kicking. And you only got 30 minutes a week before kicking in it. And it was really hard to get your surroundings as opposed to any other. And maybe in the first half, we took a bit of shots. And I think if it was in any other ground, mm. they go over. And first half, both teams had 11 shots. They just made the most of their 11 shots where we didn't. So it was a very close encounter, and then when they got that lead, they could take control of the ball, they could sort of draw us out and then try and pick the points, because if you knew that you were getting the lead in the first half was was massive. We knew that going in at half time, um, and the second half, there was 30 minutes of our lives where we had nothing to, we just literally had to go for it, and thankfully um, it went on to an extra, another extra time and we got over the line again. And I heard that Mickey, when he went in at half time, he has never really raised his voice to, to the team ever before. But he sort of let rip. Is that true? Ah, uh, yeah, he was he was shouting now. But um, Mickey Mickey's a very calm man. But he just he needed what had to be said. Yeah. And I think a few boys, especially myself, we just needed that sort of kick. And we worked for well fourteen odd months to get to that place. And like for us to just leave it in Crow Park it was just going to be an absolute disaster. And we knew that. We had 30 minutes to ratify it and Mickey sort of had put his words out that what we needed to do and we become better in the second half. We got the goal um, where Niall says he claimed he scored but <laughs> that's for another day but uh, we got the goal and then we went to extra time and then uh, Kill McCud took a two-point lead and then that's whenever the magic happens from Jerome. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it was what Mickey was needed to be said was said and it definitely spurred us on for a good second half now. Anything we had worked for from a young age and anything that had been distilled in us, we were just literally, we weren't playing as the way we knew we were capable of. If you come here to train that night, whenever you're playing the AB games and they're literally frantic and they're they're literally nip and tuck with, that wasn't the way we had played in the first half in Crow Park. And we had sort of like let ourselves down, if anything, but we knew that we had 30 minutes. Thankfully, we had 30 minutes to write a fight. Turn it around. Yeah, we did. And we, um, we pushed on and I think still in normal time, we had opportunities to win the game. Yeah, and all those other extra times really stood to you then. No, they did not. You don't plan to go to extra time, but whenever you go to extra time, a couple of times, uh, it, it stands in good stead because yeah. you know what you needed to do. Because You're prepared yeah, for it then. Teams might come in and they might be all ready to go at the start because you never know. A team could gain that extra time by scoring last minute winner. We carried off did, and we obviously, we were coming into that maybe, how did this game end up in extra time? But... There's no point going on about past times. Like that wasn't going to benefit you. You knew what was ahead of you was more important. And Bobo scored the goal in the All Ireland final while he's claiming that it was his goal. Was it his goal? I'll let him have this one. Um, he's probably told the town and country it's his goal anyway. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but here, to be totally honest, I didn't mind who scored it as long as that ball went in the net. I didn't care. So it was good to get the goal at that time, that vital time. And. It was something that we needed because maybe a couple of minutes earlier, Kilma could have had a goal and been 10 points up. Yeah, of course. And in the end, it was Jerome that scored the goal, the winner. What was it like seeing that ball go in the net and you knew it was in the dying minutes? As soon as the ball went in the net, I was thinking, it's a square ball. Oh, this can't be square ball. So I was just looking at the screen. So it sort of held back a lot of celebrations. <laughs> I was cramping up and my legs were literally giving in. And I was like holding myself up. And I looked at the screen and I could see he was outside the box and I was like, oh my God, unbelievable. So <laughs> yeah, that's whenever I started to celebrate. But then I was thinking, how long's left? How long's left? Can we literally stop this to make sure that Kilma Cudd don't get another point and take this to maybe a penalty shootout, which is maybe the worst thing that you could have needed. Oh my God. So uh, yeah, but it was thankfully the two minutes were added on and we 
we nullified them. Eugene actually caught a ball in his, his own um, 14, which was we needed our hands in possession. And then moving up the field, we won the ball back and that was it, time was up. And what was it like? Do you remember that feeling or what? who do you run to? It was absolutely surreal. I remember Jared Mac Jerry McAvoy, who had been somebody I'd look up, looked up to, and I uh, just seen him and we literally just hugged it out. And then it was just literally, it, it, that feeling, like if you could bottle it and sell it, you would be an absolute millionaire. It <laughs> is the best feeling in the world, but it's something that I'm just so happy that it happened because you literally look at them days and you're you're doing extra runs and that, that's what it's for. It's for that day and that feeling because it's special and you just don't want it to end. It was just, it was the best feeling I've ever had in my life. We're here in Castle in Forest Park. Michal Rooney had told me at the Ulster final that here in January of last year, you'd done a lot of pre-season running. Yeah, we did. Uh, we met up as a group, especially Michal, his younger brother, Christopher and Aaron and myself. And um, we decided that we needed just to put the head down and we tried to get a lot of training done. We were in lockdown and we were in sort of unprecedented times, but we tried to make most of what we had and the facilities we had and Arn, uh, knowing Arn, like he, he just has a lot of knowledge and he knows what to do at the right time. So we, we just were literally sponges off Arn and we, we pushed each other on. You were, you were racing against each other, you were doing agility work, you were running against each other, but you didn't want the other person to win, but it was, it was healthy competition and it, it made sure that we were we were ready to go whenever the season actually started to begin and i think it stood in good stead especially um throughout the year every day there was a different set a uh, set out what we were going to do we maybe had we were going to work on our speed next day we we're going to work on our conditioning change the direction so it was really good fun but you knew that we were working hard this was the area here that you actually did all your running yeah. i didn't even know this existed and i've been here so many times yeah um this is where we had warmed up we had it on um a lot of our movement and change of direction, um, maybe two on twos, one on ones. We want to do something different and incorporate the ball into it. Sometimes whenever people are doing their pre-season, they forget about what's more important. Yeah. And that's actually football because that's what you want to improve on mm -hmm. first and foremost. So we always made sure that the ball was in our hand and we were doing stuff that was going to benefit us in the pitch. And at that point, pitches were closed and obviously you couldn't train as a full team. So it was nice, I suppose, to get out to somewhere you're allowed to come. And it was just a few years, as you said. You were doing it uh, with people that had the same goal as you, so that made it a wee bit more special. We heard the news that Mickey Moran is stepping away as manager for next year. What did you think when you heard the news? Uh, there was a meeting that was held, but unfortunately uh, I was on holiday abroad, so um, I was actually in the air. When I got off the plane, I called one of the boys, and it was, it was, it was hard because personally I thought... Um, Mickey was going to stay on. Like, you can't um, underestimate what the man's done. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like he's he's left a legacy, and each one of us individually. And I'm not talking as a footballer, as an individual. He's he's that man that's made us all better people, and he's an absolute legend. And we're so appreciative to have him in the club. It, it was just an absolute revolution. And to say that Mickey Moore managed um, me personally, it'll be something that I'll carry for the rest of my life. And at the end of the day, uh, all good things have to come to an end. So, yeah, and M Mickey's decided to step away and we'll wish him all the best in his retirement because mm -hmm. he's had some journey, but I'm so happy that he got to where he wanted to be. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm just so happy that he was our manager and um, it's something that I'll cherish forever. But at the end of the day, we have Conleth and Richie as well. And like the, Richie's been an absolute um, unbelievable person to come in. Uh, mm -hmm. He's one of them guys that is straight to the point and whatever you need to do you'll say it um he's been absolutely unbelievable i've loved working with richie um he just takes that um that attitude of takes nothing but perfection and that's what you need especially but for mickey if you had to describe what he was like as a manager in that dressing room before the games what was he like mickey was the calmest man you'll ever meet a uh, he just his aura um he, he always when he spoke you listened and he was the type of guy that is in it 100% or not in it at all. And that, that's what you wanted from Mickey. Um, Mickey always had that uh, feeling that the, like when the whole dressing room heard him, um, Mickey would have just talked and if he caught eyes with you, um, you literally, you, you were in a stair gaze and 
it was unbelievable. Now um, I've just the the words that he used and the phrases it'll, it'll stick with me forever as a player. Like he he just had that with everyone, and I'm sure if you had this conversation with every other lad on the pitch, it'll it'll be similar. Um, he, he, Mickey was just a a great person, and he was so good to us personally as individuals and as a team. Like we we can't actually say how much uh, we were thankful and how much we loved him. And growing up, it must have always been the dream to win an All-Ireland title with Kilku. And to actually now be sitting here now and you are an All-Ireland champion, you've done it. The way I would sort of describe it is whenever you used to have your birthday party and your cake would come in and uh, you had had that wish to make a wish that every year it was to win All-Ireland. It was just to win All-Ireland. So whenever that comes through, it's, it's special and it's something that uh, I'll never forget. And what was the celebrations like after when you got to meet all the people on the pitch, I'm sure, back in Kilku? A lot of people were lost for words. It was whenever you had to sit back and you had the chat. I'd, I'd sat back with a few guys and we had a chat and we were like, oh, what, what, was your, what was your feeling of it? What was your best feeling of the final whistle? How did you feel? And everyone had a different opinion of how they felt and what happened and how they described it. So the few days after it, it is it's absolute mayhem. But whenever you sit back and talk to the guys and just say, well, what did you think? Like, it was, it's unbelievable to hear everyone's opinion. And it's just like, this is what you play football for. It's for these days. And to make, say that you done it was unbelievable. But I think that next year we're going to be back with a, we're going to go in the down championship again. And we're just going to try and write our own history. You're going to try go and do two in a row? Ah, uh, well, <laughs> as you said earlier, Down's a very, very hard championship to win and we'll never look beyond Down and that's something that has been distilled into Kilku as much as success that you might have, like you'll never look beyond and that that's the best way to be and we'll never take anyone lightly, we'll always look at our next game and we'll go at it again and it'll be, it'll be hopefully a good journey. Well, Caelan Doherty, All-Ireland Champion, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you very much, Aisling, cheers.